Good day, folks, and welcome to the IT Way. My name is Joanne, and this is one of many videos that we have in our membership portal here and in the description below that is ties into the Cisco Meragi Certification Blueprint. You're going to see all information and tools that you're going to have for you to go from zero to hero in everything about Cisco Meragi portfolio. So if you are interested in that, you can go to the description below. Enjoy this video and see you the next one. After knowing how to mount the access points, let's take a look to the access point placement. A very good way and simple way to look at it is a floor plan. So here we have an example for the Meraki documentation as a floor plan of all the offices and then how they position the access points. So it's going to be very interesting to look through it, to try to see and study. So what are the things that they consider and why they put this device here and not all in the other place. But let's go through this and we can have some wisdom share then base of that access point placement. If you remember before we discussed what is the estimate number of access points and the two considerations that we did was the application throughput, what kind of devices, what the kind of applications they're going to consume to the network and how many devices or clients are going to be around that area. So if you remember, it was around 17, 18 access points, depending on the considerations. And here we have way more than that, but you have probably an area to cover that is way bigger. So that's the third point that we didn't discuss before, and this is the area coverage. So probably with your calculation says two access points is good enough, but then you have a whole football uh, field to fill out with two access points, but it's going to be nearly impossible to make it happen. So that's why this access point placement is very good. You can use the floor plan of your office, of the facilities, and then you can use a predictive site service software to make it more accurate and understand that this placement of the access point, what is the repercussion of that? What is the area that the access point is going to cover? And what is the bit rate or the throughput that you can have during that area? And that's why you can start placing your access points and see what is the overlapping between them. We're going to have and see another video about the channel overlapping to design then what kind of channels we're going to place. But this one is basically in the area. So what is the actual area that can be covered to fulfill the need and the bandwidth on it? So if you take a look, one of the things that I can highlight seeing that is that this area, if you see, it's relatively big compared to the other small areas that are divided in that building. So in this area, we just have four access points. With that, we can imply that in this area, four access points is more enough to cover. And if we, let's imply that the coverage area, let's say more or less, I'm not very good drawing circles, but let's put that in consideration that this is more or less the areas they're gonna cover. Let's assume that. And then with this one, we say, yeah, four access points, it's well enough to cover this area. But then why in area that is significantly less area coverage, you have five access points. So if we, I'm going to do my best, try to cover those areas. Let's say that that's the access points area coverage without considering all the other advanced features that we can say that we can reduce that. But let's say that you say, this is a waste of access points. Probably we can cover this one. If we take the same consideration as this one over here, just with two access points, we can put one here and we put one here, and it's more than enough to cover. That's why it's important then to say what is the consideration, the capacity, and the coverage that we need to have. And one example of this one is if we take consideration this floor plan, we can see that here there are a lot of desks. So I'm assuming then that this is the heavy lifting of the whole infrastructure with everybody sitting there with their laptops working, doing WebEx meetings, and doing all the information high bandwidth consumption. So if that's the case, it means that it's not taking consideration just the area coverage, it's taking consideration the capacity, the number of clients that this is gonna take. And that's why you need resilience, you need redundancy, you need to ensure that you cover for all those clients. And in comparison with this, it looks like this is the lounge, the resting area, and probably the dining area, probably that it looks like a little bit of a kitchen. And if that's the case, it means that it's not like everyone is going to be there all the time, probably at lunch, but not all the time. And the resiliency and the business criticality of one of these access points not be able probably to hold everyone and just two people that cannot have access to internet is not the same as the business criticality of having a very resilient 
good coverage and capacity area here. And it's the same situation, for example, if we see here, if we take that consideration, but one access point here would be good enough to cover all that area if you take into consideration the area only. But you see desk here, desk here, desk here. So you need resiliency and you need to compensate with the capacity. That's why you have these four access points just to cover this small area compared to this one. So if we take consideration, it will be just one, which is not the case. So that's why it's very important for you to understand the floor plan, understand the use case of each area and in each room. That's why you're going to get the bandwidth. That's why you're going to get the number of clients that is going to be there in, in the particular moment simultaneously. And based on that, you can cover the area to ensure you have all the area capacity and throughput that you need in each one. So that's why it's very important to go and do a predictive site survey based on the models of the devices that you select and see how that plays out to ensure that we have enough coverage for enough capacity for enough bandwidth for all the devices on your website. So, and that's it. The next one, we're going to take a little bit more to the design in the channel planning. So if you have this situation here, you have this situation here, and you have this one here, and then this one here. So these one three might overlap. So how you can ensure that you can you cannot have channel overlapping and this access point can see that's independent of this one and this one, and you don't have too much noise talking to each other. Let's see it in the next video.